It's been almost three years since Procreate's last major update and version 5.4 has finally arrived. This release was rumored and pushed back a couple of times, but it's here now and it's packed with features that are going to change the way you use the app. If you want a visual reference of everything I'm about to cover, including a full directory of every single new brush, and there are almost 200 of them, you can grab my free 5.4 cheat sheet using the link in the description below. Hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Nicole from iPad Calligraphy, where I teach curious creatives how to use the iPad for lettering and design. Now, before you dive in and install the update though, there's one very important word of warning. Back up your work first. That means your artwork canvases, your brushes, and don't forget your color palettes too. Procreate doesn't save these anywhere outside of the app, so if something goes wrong during the install, you could lose everything. I've put together a separate video that covers exactly how to do a safe backup, and you'll find the link in the description below as well as just above. The good news is this might be the last time you have to manually back up your brushes because one of the biggest new features in 5.4 is automatic brush storage. So let's take a look at Procreate 5.4 now. When you install the update, Procreate will now ask where you want your brushes stored, locally on your iPad or in iCloud. If you choose iCloud, your brushes will always be safely backed up and synced. Behind the scenes, brushes are now saved in a tidy folder structure, library, set, individual brush. So not only is it safer, it's also easier to track what you own. And if you've been testing the beta version, stick around. Later, I'll share a quick story about something that happened to me with brush duplication in case you've seen the same issue. The update is brush focused in the best possible way. Procreate teamed up with Kyle T. Webster, who joined the team in 2024 to create 18 brand new brush sets. Each set has around 10 brushes, which adds up to nearly 200 new brushes to play with. The variety in this update is incredible, and my lettering friends will be especially happy to know there's an entire section devoted to just lettering brushes. Beyond that, you'll find sets of pencils, pens, inks, markers, pastels, oils, wash, watercolor, charcoal, comics, street art, digital textures, and some really fun experimental brushes. Honestly, it feels like Procreate just handed us a fully stocked art studio. And hats off to Savage for the creativity behind the brush names too. There are some really fun nods to Australiana since the Procreate team is based in Tasmania. And the mix of quirky, unique names shows how much thought went into this collection. With that many brushes, organisation had to improve, and it has. The brush library now has two main sections. The new Procreate library for the fresh sets, and the classic library for all of the original brushes plus any you've imported. You can pinch out to see all your libraries, create new ones, and import multiple sets at once. You can also customize the icons. Yes, emojis are included too, and each library keeps a history of its own recent brushes, which you'll find at the top. And finally, the feature we've all been waiting for, brush search. Just pull down, type a name, and Procreate will instantly find that brush across all of your libraries. And here's a little bonus, it's also a clever shortcut for hopping between libraries quickly too, since search will jump you straight into the right set. For anyone who loves customizing brushes, Brush Studio just got a serious upgrade. And I'll show you my personal favorite edition in a moment. And my iPad calligraphy students are going to be especially excited about this one. First, let's look at the new jitter options. Under the stroke panel, you can now adjust the jitter lateral and jitter linear, which controls the randomness of the stroke along the path. And under the shape panel, we've now got extra sliders, vertical and horizontal roundness jitter, which lets you control how each brush stamp scatters and varies. This means you can add randomness in specific directions instead of just a generic scatter. And in the rendering tab, there's a new alpha threshold slider. This is especially useful when you're working with textured brushes. You can push the threshold higher for sharper, crunchier marks or lower for a softer blend. One of my favorite 
favorite changes though is the Apple Pencil tab. You can now set the pressure curve per brush. Previously, pressure was a global setting that affected every brush at once, which was frustrating if you wanted your calligraphy brush to behave differently from your sketching or painting tools. But now each individual brush has its own custom pressure response. You can fine tune your lettering brushes for smooth, elegant strokes without messing with how your illustration brushes feel. And finally, there's a brand new preview tab. This gives you a live preview of your brush stroke so you can instantly see how it responds to size changes, tilt, pressure or wet mix before you even put your pencil to canvas. It makes the whole process of designing and testing brushes so much faster and intuitive. These new tools in Brush Studio aren't just tucked away for brush makers, they're actually being put to use in those new brushes which shipped with 5.4. The new brushes aren't just about sheer numbers, they're demonstrations of Procreate's latest tech advancements. Some lettering brushes for example use dual primary and secondary colors to create instant outline or two-tone effects which is amazing. They also have other modes like multiply baked in for realistic layering. Now let me circle back to that beta story I mentioned earlier. Because I'd already installed the beta on a different iPad I ran into duplication issues when I updated my main device. I had set iCloud as my brush storage on both and when I opened Procreate on my main device I saw it had created four libraries this time rather than two. Procreate Library, Procreate Library 1, Classic Library and Classic Library 1. The good news is this update introduced a fantastic new feature. You can share an entire brush library in one go. So I took the original Classic Library which was from my old iPad, exported it and saved it to my MacBook. Once I had that backup safely stored, I deleted the extra copy inside Procreate. I did the same with my Procreate Library and kept Procreate Library 1 which was the newer version. One quick tip though, if you're zoomed out in the library view and you try to long press to share, it can be a bit buggy. What worked better for me was opening the library, tapping the little title at the top and selecting share from there. If you hit the same duplication problems, that's the method I would recommend. So that's the big picture of Procreate 5.4 between the new brushes, smarter organization, the search feature and automatic iCloud backup. This is a massive update update for anyone who creates regularly in Procreate. And don't forget to grab the free PDF guide with a list of all these features we covered here today and a complete directory of all of the new brushes. You'll find the link below. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.